Parker and her daughter, Monica Parker. And today, basically, we want you to just speak on uh, a few medical issues. Our, our company is called Sisters Daughters Incorporated, and we are a company that's up and coming. We are reaching out to many uh, breast cancer patients, and we just want to allow them to share their story with you and um, just experience basically what they have endured. And Ms. Lois, I would like for you, if you can, is to, to just tell us a little bit about you know, how you found out, um, the day that you found out uh, about your, your, your breast cancer that you had. Um, by testing, you know, the, the breast, mm -hmm. they tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found it. I was laying down and I got up and got in the tub. And when I was, you know, taking a shower, that's when I found the lump. So I went to my doctor and he told me it was more than a lump. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I knew then what he meant when he said that. So then I went and got the x-ray and uh, the mammogram and all of that, so mm -hmm. they told me that's what it was. Wow. Mm. So it wasn't a pleasant thing to hear, but that's right. the way it went. Right. And then I had the operation. Mm -hmm. And did you, did you have to do any type of radiation or chemotherapy or anything? Yes. Did you? I had to do mm -hmm. chemotherapy and radiation. Wow. Okay. And how many weeks? Did you recall going through four, four, four weeks? Yeah. Okay, four weeks of, of the chemotherapy and then radiation. Uh, or did you have them together? Yeah, together. You had them together. Okay. Wow. It wasn't pleasant, but mm -hmm. it was something you had to do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just a lot. It's just a lot to endure, you yeah. know, and it wears and tears on your body, yeah, you know. Yeah. And sometimes you may even ask yourself, why me? Mm -hmm. You know, I know. I, I Trust me, I know because I've, I've been there with you, mm -hmm. so I totally, totally understand. And I want to also ask you, you know, mm -hmm. while you were going through this, um, I'm sure it was a concern to you um, as to what type of things that you were going to go through with your family, what they thought about it, you know, how they, it's an emotional journey that's not just with the patient, it's also with the, uh, the party's family as well, yeah. you know, and, and you think that you're going through something and your family is totally going through so, so much that's more. True. You know, true. and it, it's just an emotional roller coaster because you, you don't have any idea you know, that something like this would have happened in your life. Do you know what I mean? So I'm sure that it was it was tough, it was difficult and it wore on your, your, your body physically. And then there were some things that I'm sure that you weren't able to do in your everyday life it's true. that you would have liked to have continued to do. Yeah. So do it takes a toll on the body. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, your everyday life you, you know, your work able to just even uh, cook dinner, do your normal things that you normally do. It was just a struggle, probably to just even get up and down the stair, yeah, you true. know. And so I think that, you know, sometimes we're missing help, you know, as, or, as far as those areas are concerned, because you need to be concerned about not only going through the process, but after you get home, your home care, you know, who's here to help you with your home care mm -hmm. if you don't have family and that sort of thing, you know. So I'm... And you lose your hair. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. so. And the taste, the taste of food. Yes, I hated to eat, yeah. but I know I had to eat in Absolutely. order to live. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was kind of rough. It was rough. I'm sure. Some days were better than others. You know, but mm -hmm. it was just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain. Yeah. And the operation. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would have been, mm -hmm. you know, because I had what to call um, 
The branch is not soft, it's like lumps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the name of it. They call it. You had, did you have a lumpectomy or mm -hmm. you had a lumpectomy? Mm -hmm. so they, yes. So they took that the tumor out or what have you. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I think it's back there again, you know, because of what you feel. The, t the tissue and the, and the area yeah, gets right. hard. The way she had to more or less make it look like a breast. Mm -hmm. She said it. Uh, yeah, I can't think of the name of it. Mm -hmm. I'm very forgetful, and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I can think, well, it comes right back, but right. still, you know, it takes a toll on the body. Right. It's, it's, it's a traumatic thing to happen to the body, because it's not something that belongs there. So mm -hmm. it, 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 it's really traumatic, so I totally understand. And we also have with us um, her daughter. After Mrs. Parker went through this trauma with regards to her breast cancer. She then found out also that her daughter Monica had breast cancer as well. And Monica, if you will, can you, can you just tell us a little bit about your journey with regards to breast cancer and how you found out and how you felt and what was on your mind at the time mm -hmm. and what you, what, what you had to endure? Well, I had, um, <coughs> I was with my mom while she was going through hers. Um, I was going to her a doctor's appointments. I was going to a chemo appointment. Right. And uh, I think it was around the first bout of her first chemo treatment. I was at home and I was taking a shower, and I felt a lump. But I thought maybe it was because you know my menstrual was about to come on. And, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes your breasts get tender, so I mm -hmm. kind of didn't worry about it. But then I did worry about it because I said that I have never felt that before. Mm -hmm. So her second cancer, her second chemo treatment, um, her oncologist, I asked her. I said, I feel I felt a lump in mine. I said, Would you mind examining me? Mm -hmm. And she said, No, no problem. So I got up on the table. Now really, it's all supposed to be about her. Absolutely, absolutely. But you know, I was like, Okay, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. So let's you know, let's do this. Mm -hmm. So she, she put me on the table and she examined me and she mm -hmm. said, yeah, that's definitely a lump and I want mm -hmm. to get you tested right mm -hmm. away. And this, if I may interrupt you for one quick second, and this was as far as the time frame with you going with your mom mm -hmm. all this time with her, with her appointments to her specialist mm -hmm. and, you know, the surgery and, you know, all, all that she had went through. What was the time frame between you helping her through her process and you finding out about your 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 journey beginning the time frame mm. I say a month wow a month a month a month she was going through her thing and like I said she wasn't even finished her treatment wow and I found out that's what I'm saying when we went to her uh, her appointment for a chemo mm -hmm. um she had to see her oncologist first. So I said, well, could you examine me? And she right. said, fine. And she felt a lump. Um, they did a mammogram and then they did a biopsy. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days later, I was here. I was sitting on the couch. And I got a phone call that I had breast cancer also. So basically, before she even finished everything on her side, then they got started on me. Mm. And did they even mention what stage they thought? Because you had to have a biopsy too, did you not? Yeah. And did yeah. they tell you what stage? Well, I was stage one. Okay. I was I wasn't as bad as my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, she had it in both breasts. Oh, okay. And I just had it in one. And um, when they did the uh, when they did the uh. uh Anyway, they did a certain test, mm -hmm. and the cancer wasn't advanced. It was, you know, mm -hmm. stage one. So the only thing I had to have was radiation. But I had to have radiation every day for a month. Okay. So every day I had to. And I wasn't far from Lincoln, also. I basically walked. Okay. I could walk there, mm -hmm. but coming back was. I can there was times I had to sit down on the side of the street mm -hmm. 
find somebody's steps at their house and just I didn't care I had to sit down and it took me twice as long to come home mm -hmm. because after the radiation you know I'm fine when I'm going mm -hmm. but once I got you know coming back it was just mm -hmm. like a struggle um, I was just weak mm -hmm. um, my whole right side turned black mm -hmm. from the radiation right. the radiation um, it, it was it was it was it was challenging because we were still going through stuff with her, mm -hmm. you know. But I did have my lump lump at, at, lumpectomy, mm -hmm. and now I'm taking medicine that I'll be taking for five years. And now I'm having side effects from that. Mm -hmm. I'm having more side effects than I thought I would. Um, but the doctor said you have to take the medicine, so you know you mm -hmm. got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to have joint pain. Um, uh, certain uh, certain things that I eat don't taste right. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a, it's really affecting me. There's times when um, I I get nauseous, where usually I don't get nauseous. Mm -hmm. It's at certain times, you know. But it's this this pill is pretty much basically keeping the cancer from coming back. So okay. I'm dealing with it, but it was it was stressful. And even my father, he said, he said, what you girls trying to do? You're both trying to leave me. But he was supportive, you know. Um, I kept hanging in there with my mom, and mm -hmm. she was trying to do what she could do for me, you know. Uh, and I think that made us close. We were always close. Mm -hmm. That just brought it home. Yeah. That mom and daughter both. Yeah. And the, even the hospital, they were like, oh, my God. So they did a genetic testing on both of us, mm -hmm. which um, came back normal. Good. It came back normal, mm -hmm. but they just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And we were both, we went to Lincoln all the same hospital. Right. We had the same doctor, the same surgeon. Everything was the same. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, I mean how, how, what's the chances of that really happening, a mother and a daughter? It's very rare. Going through cancer at the same time. It's very, very rare. That's why they, you know, they did they did a couple studies on us. Okay. Because they couldn't believe, like, they were like, oh, like, Mrs. Parker is still going mm -hmm. through hers, and here you come. Are you kidding me? Why? Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I was like, okay, you know, I, I do everything right, you know, and... You know, she doesn't smoke, she doesn't mm -hmm. drink, but she had the worst of, 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 of breast cancer. Of breast she had like stage three, okay. maybe going into stage four. Mm -hmm. But I, I have to do give kudos to Lincoln Law Hospital and Dr. Jennifer Sable. She is the bomb. Okay. And, you know, she made us feel comfortable. And even when our surgeries, you know, she, she was... She stuck right there. Mm -hmm. She was just, you know, she wasn't, oh, well, you know, you'll be okay. Well, Keep it moving. Sure she was, no, she was real personal. She made it personal. Yeah. 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 And, and so if there was one thing um, that you could um, say to other women today. Do your self-examination on a regular. I would say every every month really when you're in the shower the bath or even if you're just getting dressed take time to feel yourself to make sure that everything is okay because that's how I found out if I had never did the self-exam I would have never found out and it may have been a, a more worse than it was um you just have to take your time with it and have faith in your family and your doctors that they know what they're doing and you know uh, just stay true to yourself and you know don't blame yourself because breast cancer affects everybody anybody it, it, it can affect anybody you don't have to be doing anything wrong it's just something that happens but when it does happen you know stay strong and know that everything is going to be all right and help is on its way. And help is on its way. Yeah. Thank you so much, ladies. This is such a blessing. You have absolutely no idea how I had to fight back the tears myself <laughs> as far as this situation is concerned because it, it's really brought back a lot of memories when I went through my own um, issues with breast cancer. And while I'm at it, I just want to mention that 
Miss Lois Parker is what well, was is still and always has been one of my mother's dearest, dearest friends. And for this to happen to my mom's dearest friend, it just hurt me to no end. And to remember how we used to babysit Monica, her daughter, my sisters and I, we babysit Monica. <laughs> and here we are, and she's a, a, a beautiful young woman. She's got a very gifted voice, and to have gone through as much as she has gone through, much as she has endured, is just amazing and their stories are deserve to be told and thank you so much for all of your time I wish you all well and God's blessings upon you both thank you and we will be in touch thank you, thank you. Thank you.